Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be doing a install tutorial for the latest version of LSPDFR for Grand Theft Auto 5. Let's go ahead and let's get into this tutorial. start this tutorial off, you're going to go down into the description down below where you're going to find five four links. First one is going to be the LSPD FAR first response. When you go to this link, you're going to hit this download for this file button. You're going to scroll all the way down and then you're going to hit agree and download. And you're going to download this manual install version. I'm not going to do so as I already have it. You're going to go to the next link in the description. It's going to be script hook V. You're going to download this version right here. That's the download button. You're not going to worry about the SDK version because that is for developers at the states here. So just download this version. This version has been recently updated to the latest version of Grand Theft Auto 5. After that, you're going to go to the third link, which is going to be the simple trainer for Grand Theft Auto 5 version 14.1. This is a little outdated from the current version of Grand Theft Auto, but it still works with the latest version of Grand Theft Auto 5. The reason we go with this trainer is because the trainer that comes with script V is not that very good of a trainer. This one has a lot more features and allows you more capability of doing different things. The final thing that you're going to find in the description for that you need to download for the LSPDFR is script V.net version 3.4.0. Once you're on this page, you're going to scroll down until you see this one right here. That's the script V.net.zip. You're going to click that and you're going to download it. Once you have all the things downloaded, you're going to find them on your desktop here. The first step you're going to have to do when installing, installing LSPDFR is going to need to find your game folder. I have Steam, so we're going to be using Steam for this. The quickest way to find your Steam file, your Steam folder for your game version is to open up your Steam and go to the library. You're going to go to the game that you're going to install this for. In this case, it's going to be Grand Theft Auto V. You're going to right click it, manage, and then you're going to click this button here that says browse local files. This will bring up a window here. What you're going to do next is you're going to come to common, the very first thing here, you're going to go back by one. Now the very first thing that you are going to do that is going to be recommended is you need to have at least a 500 gigabyte SSD. The reason for this is because you're going to be making a copy of Grand Theft Auto 5, the entire Grand Theft Auto 5 folder. Now, Grand Theft Auto 5 is 102 gigabytes to be exact. So, if you have two copies of that, that's going to be 204 gigabytes. The reason for having a 500 gigabyte hard drive is when you do the copy version, you're already doing 200 gigabytes of space for that 500 gigabyte hard drive. Now, obviously, of course, you're not going to 100% have 500 gigabytes when you do a 500 gigabyte hard drive. The system needs to take up some space of that hard drive for it to work properly. So in most cases, you have 450 gigabytes of hard of space. Once you take 200 out of it, you only have 250 gigabytes left of space. After you do some more modding to Grand Theft Auto 5, you will have about 100 gigabytes left of that storage. But to get to, the, to continue on with this tutorial, we're going to right click our folder here. We're going to hit this copy button and then we're going to hit paste. This is going to take some time for it to copy everything over. So I will see you guys when it is done. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Now that we have a copy of our Grand Theft Auto 5 folder, what we're going to do is we're going to take this folder version. We're going to right click it and we're going to hit pin to quick access. This is a new feature with Windows 11 that allows you to pin it to the actual file explorer here, as you can see. Before in Windows 10, you used to be able to just grab it and pin it and drag it to the actual file explorer. But as you can see here, it cleans up with a little circle with a line through the middle of saying nope you can't do that 
All right, now that you have the copy made, we're going to go inside this Grand Theft Auto V folder. And you're going to install these in the proper order that I installed them in. So, to start things off, you will need WinRAR or 7-zip to extract these files. As they are zip files, you're going to need a file manager or a application that can extract zip files. I recommend WinRAR, but I will have both WinRAR and 7-zip in the description down below for you to download if you do not have them already. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this LSPDFAR version 0.4.9, which is technically what the version is, manual install, and we're going to open it up. We're going to take any time you, this will pop up if you have WinRAR and you only have the, after 40 days periods, it will show that you must buy a license, but it, you, you do actually don't need to. You just click the X bar whenever it has something like that. So now we're going to take all of this. We're going to select all of it by holding our left mouse button and selecting all of it. The only thing that you do not need to select in here is licenses. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the control key and then left click licenses that would deselect the selection. Now it's as simple as grabbing it, dragging and dropping. It's going to take a little bit of time. Once it's finished, you can go ahead and delete the uh, zip file for LSPDFAR. It is now done. We're going to go ahead and delete it. Next step up is you're going to be installing script hook V. This is the latest version that's been updated for the latest version of Grand Theft Auto 5. You're going to open it up, go into bin, and you're only going to get the dinput 8 and the script hook V.dll. You're not going to install the native trainer because that is the trainer that we will be replacing anyway. Let's go ahead and drag those two and drop. you can delete. Now we're going to install trainer V. Open it up and simply you're going to take these two files here, trainer V.isa and trainer V.ini. Grab those two files, drag and drop. And delete. Now the very final thing that you're going to need to grab is script V.net. You're going to open this up. And these are the three files that you are going to download or well, not download, but put into GTA five. You're going to get G get script hook V.net SI script hook V.net dot INI script hook V.net two dot DOL and script hook V.net three dot DOL. So just hit your control key and left click these four files drag and drop simple as that now you can go ahead and delete this now you're going to go ahead and launch the rage plug and hook from in here you're going to double click it some things might pop up saying that it's got blocked by your defender firewall if it does just hit yes you want to block it in other words if it doesn't say that you will come here to this disclaimer just a disclaimer, go ahead and accept. There's nothing bad with it, just acknowledging that you will accept the licenses. Now here you have the Rage plugin in settings. Once you're in these settings, you'll see that your console key is F4. You can use this for in-game command consoles for actions such as spawning vehicles and loading plugins. Plugin time of threshold is exactly what it says. Time in milliseconds, a plugin can block the game before it terminates by Rage plugin hook. This means that if a plugin freezes, it takes 10 seconds before the plugin actually gets disabled or terminated by Rage Plugin Hook. To fix common issues with things like that, you're going to take this and you're going to put it to 60 seconds or 60,000. That means it will give it one minute before it, you know, closes it out. Next thing you're going to go over to plugins and you're going to hit this button right here, load all plugins. Or you can do it the more difficult way and hit load these plugins and then select them individually. But for this purpose, we're going to do load all plugins on startup. You don't really need to touch advanced settings 
or game settings as these ones are just to revert the game version or to back up the current game version. Once you've done with that, you're going to hit save and launch. The dialog here will pop up saying that you cannot access the Razer Pelican settings once after you launch it unless you hold down the shift key upon launching Rage Pelican Hook. All you're going to do here is when this window pops up, just hit OK. Rage Plugin Hook will then hook into the game instance. If you firstly install Grand Theft Auto 5, it will need to download the GTA 5 Social Club or Rockstar Game Social Club in order for it to launch Grand Theft Auto. A lot of times we'll do that with the first initial install if you do not have Rockstar Games installed. We're going to see if we get any errors, and we don't get any errors. You will see that you launched up Rage Plugin Hood correctly if down at the bottom right you see that it says Rage Plugin Hook 1 and then the version there and then public. Another way that you will see if Rage Plugin Hook has installed correctly is when it gets to the very next screen after all of this, it will have this Rage Plugin Hook right there in the middle and it will do with the initial in game support. I will let this load and I'll see you guys when we are in game. All right, everyone, now that we are in the game, uh, there'll be a couple ways of how you'll find out whether you actually have an old speaker fire loaded or not. The first thing you can do is Why by you pressing your that? escape button and you'll see that you either have an LSP device tap here or it will say a different name than the character that you are playing. The three characters on Grand Theft Auto 5 are as follows, Michael, Trevor, or Franklin. As you can see here, it says that we have Franklin character selected, but we are named Lucas Fisher and we are off duty. So. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do a quick test to see if LSP4 is running correctly. We're going to go ahead and go into the pause menu. Just going to go into LSP4 and we're going to go to go to newest police station. We're going to go ahead and we're going to come right over here to the store at this station. And we're gonna press our okay, just let it do that. If that pops up, just hit enter. And we're gonna press our E button to enter the deep station. But the station is gonna load. And now that we're inside of the station, we're just gonna press our enter key on the go on duty. It's gonna postpone our paperwork, or sometimes we'll say things like uh now with the decent version of LSPD FARS after it became version 0 0.4 it comes up with the thing that you need to select a character to use that was pretty far go ahead and get hit, hit enter it's going to bring you into the else pretty far character creation menu where you can create your own character to play else pretty far with for this purposes we're just going to go mail and then we're just going to hit save and continue and now we're just going to hit this guy and hit use That's going to load back into the, into the station that you went into. And now, now that we have our character made, it's already put us on duty. So now we're just going to hit police locker. We're going to select our agency as LSPD, as you so I mean, the uh, LSPD, and then do just uh, the cop. We're just going to do a patrol inventory, uh, officer, and confirm. And we're going to go to down to the police garage, which will allow us to select a police vehicle that are already in LSP of our settings. We're just going to go to the basic one, we're going to go to the modifications, apply all, and just let it continue. Now we're going to see if the plugin is actually working. So what we're going to end up doing is we have a car right in front of us. We're going to get on right behind it and press our shift key, left shift. You see down at the bottom left, uh, where our minimap is, we have a red blimp in front of the vehicle. And to simply pull this vehicle over, you're going to press your Q button, or whatever button it is to activate your lights and or sirens in game. Which should be, you know, Q, but it didn't work, so it's going to be E. Now 
usually I have mine set to EQ, but it's E on basically on bicycle stuff. Now you're gonna simply get out of your car, walk up to the individual, and you're gonna press E to interact with them. You're gonna continue with your currents and ask for their ID. And then you're just gonna simply go back to your computer to your computer to run it. His name is Frank Small. Try to press your Q button and run his name. As you see, he's got a valid license, no active warrants, and all that. Then you simply just walk up back to the person, speak with them, and you and you can either just issue them a ticket or, or warning or dismiss them. And that concludes the tutorial for how to install LS Pretty Far on Grand Theft Auto 5. If you found the video helpful, please leave a like on the video or Give me a comment in the section. Let me know that you enjoyed the video or that you found it helpful. If you'd like to see other tutorials for LSP4, such as callouts, plugins, or how to install vehicles, let me know also in the comment section down below. If you've made it this far into the video, consider giving me a subscribe, as it does help out my channel even more. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.